name is Ayala. I'm the mother of two. I have an almost three, will be three when I post this year old, and a one year old who turned one at the beginning of January. So I'm mother of two, and I share a lot about cooking with children, um, with cooking with toddlers, cooking with babies, and this is probably my most requested video, and that is a cooking progression. So sort of a full cooking progression. I'm recording in my kitchen because I usually record in the playroom, but this felt more fitting, <laughs> so I'm gonna record in the kitchen since the topic is cooking. Um, in the kitchen. So I wanted to go through and give a bit of what our progression has been. So I'm going to go a little bit about that because my progression has obviously, I've had two children. It's been a bit different with the two children. It has not been exactly the same, um, but it's been similar so far. So again, my daughter's 14 months. My son's almost three. So this is going to go through sort of birth to almost three um, of what we have done and cooking has really been a huge, huge part of our home education and just our home in general. I've been cooking with the children since each of what they were born, um, and I involve them more and more, and it's just something I love so much. Um, it's so fun and just so special um, for us. So I wanted to go through and give a look at what we do for cooking. Um, and what cooking looks like in our home and how I start it and how we get to where we are. Okay, so first a little bit about how I'm going to arrange this video. So I'm gonna go through different ages and like age groupings. So sort of six, what I introduced from birth, um, six months, like nine months, a year, and then sort of what a year, like 15 months, 15 months to 18 months, 18 months plus and things like that. So I'm going to go through and discuss different age groupings and what we introduced in those age groupings. And then also I'm going to talk separately, um, probably after all the age groupings about knives. So I'm not going to include the knives in each age grouping just because that's really a progression in and of itself. Um, the knives, I feel like that just works well to really talk about our progression there. And a lot of that is skills-based progression and things like that. So because of that, I'm gonna separate out knives also because I know not everyone like loves the idea of introducing knives. Um, we do, you know, we do take safety very seriously with that, but I understand not everybody's like super into introducing knives. And just also, I don't, I feel like it just works best separately. So I'm gonna separate out the knives and we'll talk about that um, separately from all of the other items that I'm going to talk about. As I mentioned, I really start including them from right when they're born. So I will wear them in the wrap, particularly with my daughter. I did a lot of this. Um, honestly, with my son, my first, I struggled a lot more. He was, um, he was my first and I had not really gotten the wrap down and I found baby carriers to be really bulky when trying to cook with him in there. Um, so. I kind of struggled for honestly like the first six months with him, but with my daughter, I just put her in the wrap and I figured out how the wrap worked and I found it really easy to cook with her in the wrap. And part of that was I had my son and I wanted to be still enjoy cooking with him because it was something we love so much um, because it's such good bonding time for us. So I just put her in a wrap and what I'll do when they're little is I talk with them, I narrate what I'm doing, I tell them everything that I'm doing, you know, sort of just thinking aloud and just narrating, just telling them, you know, oh, we're cutting this, we're doing this now. Um, and then I'll give them things to smell, so I say spice, and I'll give them the spice to smell and let them smell that, let them touch things. So I'll, you know, let them feel a lemon, for example, and smell a lemon and just sort of have that experience while just talking to them all the time, just narrating um, everything I'm doing as I'm cooking. I would also sometimes use the little newborn seat on the trip trap, or I would even have my babies on the floor if they were happy with that. Um, realistically though, they were usually in the wrap, or my daughter was usually in the wrap with my son. It was a lot harder because I was not using the wrap as much and I'd sometimes have them in the carrier, but um, I had her in a wrap all the time and that just made it so, so much easier um, than trying to get her to be on the floor or whatever. So we did that and then that's really the first few months is narrating, letting them smell things, including them in that way. And then as my babies both got to around six months is when I found it a lot easier to really include them. So at that age, you were both sitting up, which meant 
I could use the clip-on high chair onto our island or our bar when we lived in a city for my um, first. I could use a clip-on high chair. Both babies loved sitting up at the time, so that made it really fun. And again, I would keep talking to them, put on a cooking show, just really, you know, narrate things and make it fun, you know, be exaggerated as I do things, tell them what I'm doing. Um, and just sort of talking at parentees, talking that exaggerated tone, and just really be excited. And sometimes we'd sing songs about what I'm doing, you know, sing about whatever I'm doing. So that's something I did a lot. And also around six months, I introduced both of my kids to vegetable washing. Now, for them at that age, vegetable washing for us is I take um, some sort of canister of water and I just put water in it. Obviously, this is a very supervised activity because it does have water, um, but put water in it. And then I just put the fr fruits or vegetables. At first, I just put them in and they splash around in it. And then they get older. I put it next to the thing of water, so the canister of water. They'll transfer them in and they splash around, wash it, and then I eventually add a vegetable brush. But really at the beginning, it's more of a water play sensory activity than it necessarily is washing the vegetables, but they love it and it's so fun and water gets everywhere. Wipe it up with a towel. Like it's definitely so messy, but my babies love it and it's a way to include them. It's a way to give them a really fun sensory experience where they feel like they're part of it in the kitchen. So I highly recommend vegetable washing for a baby starting around six months around when they can sit up. So then with my daughter, I introduced banana peeling at six months as well. So how that works is I'll hold the banana, I start it on top and then let her peel down the sides. So my daughter, I introduced it around six months. For my son, I introduced it around nine months. My daughter was into it right away. My son wasn't at nine months, like he was not super into it. Um, it took a month or two before he started really getting into it. So, you know, every child is different, but my daughter, six months, she was so, so into that. Um, I also work on drinking from an open cup at that age, which though not necessarily a cooking skill, it's an eating skill. Um, and it is one that applies later when we're starting to introduce pouring and things like that, having that control of the cup. So we start introducing the open cup around six months when we introduce solids. And I keep letting them smell things, feel things, interact with them in that way. And so that's just another thing that's still a major part of how I include them at six months to nine months and ages like that is still mostly is them just feeling things, smelling things, my cooking shows that I put on. But I do vegetable washing and with my daughter, I introduce banana peeling. Oh, another thing you can do around um, six, seven months, whatever, um, that fits very well with the wa with the vegetable washing is wiping up spills. So you can just give a rag and, and they can like wipe up. They might not wipe, they might play with a rag or do whatever, it doesn't really matter, but you can model it to how to wipe up um, and give it to them. So that's something I did with both children is modeled it and then gave them the rag to wipe up themselves. Okay. So I think those are pretty much the only tasks at that age. And then around nine months, both of my babies like to start emptying the dishwasher. At that point, they could stand solidly while holding. So they'd hold onto the dishwasher and they'd pull up on it, hold onto it, and then hand me silverware and I would take it from them and put it away. Just to remove any knives, anything sharp to begin with. Um, once they sort of were showing interest in it, I would let them unload um, ceramic and stuff like that as well. And I would just like kind of spot it and just really make sure I'm right there to grab anything so it doesn't fall, but um, whatever. So like I said, dishwasher is a great one around nine-ish months for both of my babies. So then around 11 months, I would say, was when they started doing a few more things. So my son, I got him a tower at 10 months. Um, the learning tower is a game changer in the kitchen, especially once you get to the point where they're no longer happy in the clip on high chair, which both of my babies got to a point where they really wanted to stand and were no longer super happy to be sitting. <laughs> so um, switched from the clip on high chair to the learning tower. And that was a huge game changer for both babies. So for my first, I got it for him at 10 months and he was standing solidly holding on but I just didn't feel like he was ready and it just didn't really feel quite right yet. Um, so then with my daughter, I was gonna need to wait for her first birthday. But since sometimes they take a while, I ordered it a bit early 
And I ended up giving it to her a few weeks early because she was so ready. She was so over the clip on high chair. And so I gave it to her at like 11 months and she loved it, loved it. And she was so ready. So she actually climbed in immediately. It took my son a while to learn how to climb in, but she climbed in from day one. So that's something learning tower, I'd say, depending on the baby, my son, he was definitely ready by 12 months, but I wouldn't necessarily say he was ready at 10 or 11. My daughter was definitely ready at 11 months. So every baby's different on that. Um, but the learning tower was a huge, huge, huge game changer for us and for my baby's cooking. So I introduced a learning tower and around that point for us, this is around 11 months. Um, but really, again, ages vary so much. And I'm trying to make that clear with my children that it's, there's a big variation. So I'd say around 11 months is when my daughter started to do. So then, just gonna say, <laughs> is transferring. I'd say around 11 months is when my daughter started doing this. My son was older. I don't remember if he was 12, 13 months, um, but I remember before he started doing it, there was like no way he was going to do it. At 11 months, there was like no way he was going to be doing that. Um, so just again, every child's different. So she started, she would um, transfer. So we cut up vegetables. Often my son would cut up vegetables and then she would transfer them into the pot or the pan or the baking sheet or whatever. She would transfer them and she really enjoys that. Often at first they're going to be transferring kind of back and forth and I just let it be and I do some as well um, just so it does <laughs> get done. But I let them play and just like, you know, I'll say, and this is a time to try to sort of reinforce some great vocabulary. So I'll talk to them, I'll transfer too and I'll say, in the pot, like in the pot, in. Um, sort of giving that vocabulary that also gives them guidance on what the intention is behind the activity. So vegetable transfer, whatever, transferring was a big one for me around when my baby's right here. Um, and is a very good one to introduce. Around then you can also start introducing pouring. So many people do dry pouring first. Um, I didn't with my first and so with my second, I'm like, oh, I'm gonna dry pouring first. Everyone recommends that. I ended up mostly doing wet pouring again um, to start just because I tried dry pouring, just it, she wasn't into it. Wet pouring, so we practiced with water, <laughs> definitely practiced with water first. Um, practice just letting her try to pour it into a bowl. And you can also do it with them, like there's nothing wrong with doing with them. So the ideal, if possible, is to do hand under hand versus hand over hand. So that would be you put your hand on the pitcher and they put their hand on yours. And this just gives them a bit more autonomy in that. Um, so that's what I do with my daughter when I'm showing her how to, when I'm pouring with her or I'll just put my hand in a different spot and we'll pour together that way. But my son does it with her sometimes too and he definitely does hand over hand, but this is my preference when possible. So I would just include them in all sorts of pouring so that, you know, I have them pour flour with them, pour water with them, pour whatever with them. And so that's just something that can be done together at first and then after they've become a bit more confident, I will start letting them do it by themselves. Um, and I put a tray underneath and I highly recommend a tray underneath because that means anything that's spilled on the tray, just pick up the tray and um, pour it into the bowl. So then it means you're reducing, significantly reducing any waste and also you are avoiding um, the mess. <laughs> significantly reducing both waste and mess. So I highly recommend using a tray underneath and that's something that just makes it a lot easier. So yeah, you can start pouring once, just give them lots of practice outside of the kitchen with water and stuff, um, pouring. And once you're confident with that, let them pour. It's okay if it's messy. Like I don't mean confident like they're perfect pourers, um, but you can let them pour and there'll be a bit of a mess, but I like to make sure that they really understand how to pour before I do that in the kitchen. Before that, I do it with them. So in the end, continue to peel bananas, continue to do all of those sorts of things. Mashing is another one that I've introduced around a year old that can be fun. Um, then they like to bang. So mashing can be a similar motion as well as a salad spinner. So I didn't have this when my son was little. I lived in a small apartment and it just, we did not need a salad spinner. With my daughter, she loves the salad spinner. I actually have it right here. Such a fun tool for a baby. Because you know how baby toys are like this. It's just like a baby toy. So fun. Um, she loves that. My son still loves that. But a salad spinner is a great tool to do with a baby and a great way um, to include them as well. 
or dry, drying out the vegetables, um, or sorry, the greens. At this point, I have introduced um, vegetable washing, banana peeling, wiping up spills, emptying the dishwasher, transferring, um, pouring with assistance, then to without assistance, um, mashing. Oh, another one at this age, again, another great one that that made me think of going through all that is shaking spices. So I introduced that around a year to my son, a little bit after. I have not really done it much with my daughter yet. She's done it once or twice, um, but shaking spices can be a fun one. Um, they shake, 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 it's fun. Uh, I just watch what's underneath because the spice jar might fall in and you just wanna make sure that it's not, you know, getting egg all over the jar. So that's another great one that you can introduce around that time. So other things at this point, you know, I'm really, including my kids when I'm right now talking about babies who are, you know, 15, 16, 17 months. And at this point, I really am, was including my son in everything, I feel like, um, you know, he was pouring stuff in, he, we, he would do mashing, he would stir. That's another one that we introduced around a year was sort of mixing. Um, my daughter's starting to do that now as well. Um, so he would mix and he would do all sorts of things. And we'd see, you know, a lot of it's just seeing progression. So we go from the banana where I'd hold it, peel down, to him peeling the banana himself. And then I introduced oranges. I would start the orange, like Mandarin type oranges. I'd start the orange and then he'd peel it. And then peeling, you can also do onions and garlic. Um, don't worry, <laughs> onions do not make your eyes water um, when you're peeling them. Um, because it's when you cut into them that they actually dry as water. So I would have my son peel the onions and he really enjoyed that. And that was something that I started doing. I don't actually really exactly remember when, but um, and during that period, once he was really good at peeling both bananas and mandarins, I introduced the onions and then the garlic. And he still does those um, to this day. And that's just really great fine motor work. Another progression you'll likely see happen, and this happened for us in the 15 to 18 month range, is going from single step to being able to do multi-step. So that might look like going from me putting the mushroom into the mushroom slicer and him pushing down to him being able to um, take a mushroom from the bowl, put it in the mushroom slicer, slice it, and then transfer it to a second bowl, or even being able to wash the vegetable and then go and slice it and put it in the bowl. So that just happens over time, the progression from a single step to multiple steps. So I'd say by 18 months, he was really, really involved in most things. At 16 months, I introduced egg cracking. So I modeled it with a tray and banging on the tray and opening the egg. And he did that once. <laughs> but I, I crack it um, against the bowl, which I know chefs shudder when they see that. But like, practically speaking, that's how I do it. So. He started doing that immediately after because that's what I do. And obviously kids are gonna do what they actually see modeled, not what you have modeled the one time. So uh, egg cracking, we did around 16 months. Again, the tray underneath is huge, huge, huge because if he spills or if he breaks the egg and it goes on the tray, I can just put it in and we're not wasting the egg, which I don't like waste. I am really big into including my kids, but I try to avoid waste, you know? I don't want like I don't want just a ton of waste waste um, waste of food. I really don't enjoy that. So obviously, I mean, who does? But I'm careful with waste. So a tray really really helps with that. So as I said, by 18 months, I'd say he was really doing pretty much everything, other than like cooking with heat. I feel like that's kind of the only thing we had not introduced the peeler yet. We didn't introduce that until pretty recently at almost three. Um, but he worked on rolling with a rolling pin. Again, you don't necessarily expect a whole lot to necessarily be getting done when they're using a rolling pin at that age. Um, but it's fun and it's including them and you do your, you know, you take turns and all that. And that's just a guideline I always used is we take turns. So instead of me like fixing it, um, I would like to take, I take turns with him. And you can still continue to all the narration and we, he learned so, so much vocabulary in the kitchen. So that's sort of to 18 months. And then around 18 months, I introduced my visual recipes, which were a game changer for him um, because they allowed him to follow a recipe and sort of know what comes next. And at first there was a lot of guidance of me telling him which one, and then he would find it and he would do it. And then 
Now he can look at the recipe and he knows that pages are read from left to right. And so he knows and top to bottom. So he can go and he can go in order and he can do that. But it gave, provided a great visual guide for him at the beginning. I would help him like by pointing and then he would know, say which one's next. And it was really good for his, I felt, I felt like it was really good for his language development. It encouraged him to say the names of the things uh, as he did them. And it was so many great pre-reading skills. So I introduced those around 18 months, which I feel like is about as early as that works because that's a time when you're likely starting to get matching down and understanding matching. So that was a great addition. And again, with those, as with everything, it's been just a continuation. From around 18 months, we introduced most things. And from that, he's just continued to become more proficient at cutting, more proficient at egg cracking, more proficient at following steps in a recipe and being able to go and know what's next. And it was just a lot of practice and we do it, we cook together really, really every meal. Like he's, we're constantly cooking together. Another development you'll likely see sometime after 18 months is pouring with control. So that's going from just pouring an entire container. So pouring whatever the contents are, even if it overflows to being able to pour from a larger container to a smaller container without overflowing it. And then we also practiced with pouring to the line, which is a classic Montessori um, activity that basically there is a line on the cup and the goal is for them to pour to the line and not keep going. And that works on control and all those things. So that has been pretty much everything. And so the only other thing other than just improving those skills that I can think of we introduced is at almost three, um, so two years, nine months, he was asking about cooking on the stove. So we have an electric stove, but it, I don't feel comfortable with him using the electric stove. Uh, I wanted an induction burner and a low powered induction burner. So I found a low powered induction burner and I introduced him to the stove with that. He loves it. He loves, loves, loves it. Um, it's like his favorite thing in the world to get to cook on his stove. So he has little pots and they go on his little induction burner and he absolutely, absolutely loves that. So that has been a great addition for him for cooking. And um, is just adding in that. And then, as I said, the peeler we added around the same time. So now on to knives. Knives are, you know, favorite around here with both my kids. They both really, really enjoy cutting things. My son is using a variety of knives and my daughter right now is using a wooden knife. So I'm going to go through with our progression of that. I've introduced knives to both of them a little after a year with my daughter. She was it was last month when she was 13 months. We introduced the wooden knife and the egg slicer. With my son, we introduced the egg slicer and also at 13 months and 14-ish months with the wooden knife. We actually tried it a bit earlier, but he wasn't too into it yet. Um, but he liked the egg slicer and I'll get into that um, because he definitely liked the egg slicer more and she likes the wooden knife more. So every child's a bit different on that, but I'm gonna go through now and tell you our knife progression. My daughter is um, right now using the wooden knife. And with the wooden knife, that's a really great starting point. It's super, super safe. There's just no way for them to cut themselves at all. It's just super, super safe. And it's also an easier motion, just pushing down versus sawing with the knife. So that's a great starter one. Introduced to my son, I think around 14 months. Introduced my daughter around 13 months. Um, both have enjoyed it. Before, another one you can do before them though, is, or at the same time, is an egg slicer. So an egg slicer is a really great tool. Again, it's not sharp, but there it's a lot easier because you're just pushing down. So versus holding like this, you're just pushing down um, to cut the thing that's in there. So an egg slicer can be used with, um, great with mushrooms, great with strawberries. You can use it with eggs, obviously, though we've never done that. Um, it can also have soft things like banana, avocado can go in there if you make it fit, if you get the right size. Um, so for the wooden knife and the egg slicer, you want to start with softer things. So the wooden knife, avocado, banana, those are great starting points with that. So once you've done the egg slicer or the wooden knife, and the next, next one we have in our progression, I've not introduced my daughter, so we're now moving past what I've introduced to her. But I've introduced my son is, or I did you know, a couple years ago, the crinkle cutter is a great one um, to do next. So I introduced that to my son around, 15 months, I want to say. So that was once he could do the uh, wooden knife. And you just want to make sure that the crinkle cutter you get is not too sharp. Some are sharper than others. 
Ours is not sharp, so that was great because he can do more things with a crinkle cutter. And honestly, it's a tool I still use um, when I'm cutting certain things as well. But the crinkle cutter is perfect for cutting um, even like zucchini and things like that. Even as he gets older, as they get older and better with it, so like carrots even, you can cut with the crinkle cutter. Whereas the wooden knife, that would be pretty tricky. So that was my next one. And then after that, I introduced a small metal knife. So it's a dull blade. You cannot cut yourself, um, but now this is a knife that is knife shaped. And so I introduced that to my son. I want to say it around 17 months. Um, so then that one, the goal is to be sort of sawing when she's not going to be doing it first. They're going to be pushing down at first. So again, you want to start with soft things, bananas, avocados, things like that. Cheese was one we did. So we used a small metal knife. And again, it's, it's not going to cut you. Um, it's very, very dull, but it can be used for softer foods. And then you can also do a nylon knife. The nylon knife is serrated and but still isn't going to cut a child. So I got that one for my son a little bit later. And the reason is just because it's larger. They're, those knives are a lot bigger and just are not as ergonomic for a very small toddler. So again, he was in 17 months when I introduced the other knife, the 16 or 17 months when I introduced the small metal knife. So he was really, really little. So I wanted to do that first before the uh, nylon knife. So the nylon knife is bigger, not as ergonomic, but it can work on that sawing motion. And so he eventually got that sawing motion, but you'll notice likely your child's using top pressure to begin with, and that's normal, just pushing down. Um, and then eventually they move to being able to do some sawing motions and also holding and steadying the food that they are cutting. That's something that often takes a little longer that they might not be engaging their second hand in steadying it. Uh, but all of this, it's okay that it takes time. Um, it's just a great um, activity for them. And if they, you know, you always want to follow their pace and their enjoyment. Um, but that's likely what you'll see is that you're going to see likely using top pressure and not necessarily holding the um, food at the beginning. And they slowly learn how to saw and do those sorts of things. So that's knives. That's when I get asked about a lot. And um, I'd say I introduced the, well, I ended up introducing a serrated metal knife, still not sharp but a little bit, I, one I wanted to wait till he was a bit more advanced on. I introduced that one probably around 20 months. Um, so that was the last knife I've introduced, but at that point he had been sawing and was really doing that as well. So his cutting has just gotten better over time, even though I've not been introducing more knives at that point. I've just seen a lot of improvement in cutting and I've explored the idea of doing a sharper knife. I just don't really feel quite ready yet. So. We're sticking with those knives for now and will at some point introduce a sharper knife. Um, but there's really, really no rush and he loves cutting and he loves that he can cut things with um, those knives. So that's knives. That's been basically everything I think we do in the kitchen and I think that's really most things. Um, so I'm gonna give a few general guidelines though that have helped us throughout all of this. So Montessori way of presenting things um, can be summed up as show, slow hands, omit words. So it's generally done um, slowly without words, just showing them. I did this a lot with my son when he was young and with my son now as he's a bit older, he's very, very verbal. And he actually often likes things to be explained to him. So this is just a follow your child and actually pay, you know, pay attention to what works for your child. So I often do explain things to him with words. And as he's gotten older, that has been better for him. And I know that for me, I don't necessarily learn so well by just seeing something. I learn a lot better from hearing or ideally from reading. Uh, I, <laughs> I very much remember my drive aid, drive with ed that I could not parallel park from like learning until I read the manual. What do you do? And once I read the manual, I did it perfectly. So, every child's different, every person's different in how they learn. So with my son, I do now, you know, talk a lot more and tell him what, I, what to do um, when I'm teaching something. But show is the acronym you can think of um, that is often done in Montessori for introducing things. Another question I get asked all, all the time is about eating food while cooking. So obviously there are things that we don't want our children to eat while we're cooking, like raw eggs, things like that. So my guidelines on that is, I do allow certain eating certain things while cooking. 
Um, so for example, say we're making muffins and they're going to have shredded apples and carrots in it. I'll give shredded apples and carrots. I do generally allow them to eat um, what is safe while cooking, but what I usually do is, or what I pretty consistently do, is I tell them they can have it, um, but we put it aside and have it sort of when we're done. Because I don't want sort of just the habit of grabbing things while we're cooking, because I worry about then grabbing batter and grabbing things that are not safe. So we do have lots of conversations about what's safe and what isn't, I mean, if it has raw eggs, if it has raw flour, things like that. So we 100% talk about those things um, a lot throughout, but we also just have the guideline that we can taste certain things and my son will ask um, if something tastes safe, but that we wait until the end. So that has just been really helpful for us. With a younger baby, it's a lot of redirecting. Like I'm really right there to you know clean her hands if her hands go in bad or to clean them off to try again. Um, and just redirecting is really what that is all about. Giving her the whisk again, letting her mix again with that or whatever it is. Um, yeah, so that is just my guideline on that is Again, I do allow some tasting. We're not a big snacking family in general. Like we have meals um, and we have snack times, but we don't generally just like snack throughout the day in our family, but we do have that while cooking as we are able to taste some of those things if it's something that's taste safe. And so say we're making um, cookies that do not have, that are like made with almond flour and peanut butter and don't have eggs or um, flour flour. So say we're making cookies like that, and sometimes I'll tell my son, oh, these are actually taste safe, we can you know, lift the ball or whatever. So I do allow that, and I just redirect babies, and then later on, we have sort of limits about what we can have, and sort of, you know, if it's safe or not, and then take the stuff that we're going to have and um, take that out for the end. So that's how we handle snacking, eating while cooking. That's a common question. Um, I don't, I think if obviously everybody's going to want to try things and that's something that for me also, huge, huge aspect of it is modeling that, is I love cookie dough. I love raw cookie dough. And so the hardest thing for me, honestly, is not eating in front of them. Is I, would, I, I personally do, unless I'm pregnant, do not really worry about salmonella at all. It's just not, I will happily eat. I, yeah, I'll happily, happily eat raw cookie dough. It's just personally something I don't worry about very much as um, an adult, but I don't want to be giving it to my kids and I wouldn't do well pregnant either. So that's just my sort of guidelines on that. Um, is, mo you know, modeling is really important. If we're snacking on things, they're going to want to too. So I think that's a big part. And that to me is the biggest challenge of it. One other tip is if you have two children, um, or more children. I know that that's something a lot of people sort of said, oh, well, good luck, you won't be able to do it when you have two, and I've not found that at all. And 100% there are more moving parts and sometimes it's more challenging, but I've really enjoyed cooking with both my kids together. Um, but one big tip that I have found so helpful is having my toddler teach my baby. So he loves to teach her, and when he teaches her something, he's usually pretty invested in her doing it. Whereas if I'm teaching her and just showing her often, he wants to take over. But if he is teaching her something, she, he's so invested in her being involved and her doing that and her continuing to do that. You know, he taught her how to peel bananas. He wants her to peel bananas every single time. Um, so things like that. I think that that is just really a really helpful way to do things is to let your older child model to teach it. And I let him be involved. You know, I let, as I mentioned about him sometimes, you know, helping her pour and doing hand over hand, even though it's not what I would do. I kind of like, as long as she's, a, as long as she's not upset um, and she's okay with it, I let him do things like that because I think it's so important for him to feel positive about her being involved and for it not to be something that, you know, he's trying to grab from her. And it's way better that he is excited about helping her, excited about her being involved, even if it's not exactly how I would model something or I would do something with her. So that's just something that I have found very, very helpful with two. And also sometimes finding ways for them both to do things together. That has been something now, as she's gotten older, uh, that she'll be like mixing something while he adds things and things like that. And I found that to be more challenging in a lot of ways than when she was younger, but something that can be really useful is trying to think through ways to involve both of them at the same time. Everything just takes time, it's messy. And I think like, I get a lot of 
comments, criticism, whatever on Instagram telling, saying like, oh, you know, sure. It's not that simple, you know, but the thing is like, I'm not, I don't ever want to hide. Like, yes, it's messy. <laughs> like, I know that the truth is it's not so messy with my three-year-old anymore. My you know, two and a half, whatever. My son has not been super messy since he's been two, two and a half, if he gets older. It was super messy when he was, you know, just turned one. I will never forget, or like before that, I will never forget the first day we used the tower. I had a bottle of turmeric on, a glass bottle of turmeric on the <laughs> counter and he grabbed it and he put it on the floor and there, I had just gotten this new kitchen mat and it was covered in yellow turmeric. Like that never comes off. I'm sure I can still find it on this mat I'm standing on right now, but like, absolute mess everywhere like it's messy it 100 percent is i can and i do show the bloopers and i try to show that like 100 percent, it is messy at first and it is so much slower but it has become so so special for me with my son which is just the why for it with me <sighs> honestly i don't know what else i would do as part of the why my son's not going to go into the other room and play alone and neither is my daughter my kids are not doing that they are not going and playing alone in the other room now, my daughter will sometimes, you know, go and open cabinets and pull stuff out. She totally does that, which is also, you know, that's a way to do it when they're young. Um, she'll totally do that, but she's not going and playing in another room. And so my kids want to be with me. And so the only way to, for me was ever to, was to involve them. So it is messy and it is slower, but I can't really imagine how I would do it any other way. And it does get less messy. It does get easier. It does get quicker and all of those things. So that's the progression of what cooking has looked like for us and just some thoughts on the process in general. You don't have to have your kid cooking like I do. Like you don't need the mini kitchen. You don't need to have them running, doing their own recipes. Like none of that's necessary. My son loves cooking. He loves being in the kitchen. So, you know, for us, that has been really fun and really special. You obviously don't need to do that. You don't need to involve them in everything. Like none of it, none of it's like required, but it has been super special for us. And I've seen him develop so many pre-reading skills, so many math skills, counting, understanding of fractions, honestly, from, um, from measuring, I'm gonna say these, I'm gonna put a little picture and I'll link them down below. Um, these measuring cups, awesome 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 if you are you know cooking with a little child because they visually show the fractions so cool but he learned fractions in the kitchen he's learned counting he's learned you know pre-reading skills this is where he learned colors it's where he learned so much of his vocabulary he's learned so much here we've connected it's been such a great time of connection um we just love it anyway so that's a why for us of why we do it why bother i get that why like okay what's the point well so much is a point for us and also the fine motor skill development. And it can all be done elsewhere, but for us, this has been the best place. Um, so thank you so much for joining. I hope I was able to cover sort of what we have done, what we've introduced. And I last thing I wanna say is just letting them observe is huge. You know, as I mentioned with my babies, I'm talking to them. As they get older, I continue to do that. You know, I have my daughter in her um, tower and sometimes she's not doing anything, but I am talking to her. I am putting on a show. I'm singing to her, whatever. And she loves it. And that makes her feel involved and connected and part of it. Um, so thank you so much for joining. I hope this was helpful. This video has been requested for so long and I hope that I covered enough. Um, so thank you so much for joining. Have a good one.